Welcome to lesson one, getting to know PHP. Within this lesson, here are some of the things we will be covering: PHP basics, server-side scripting, PHP tags, creating your first script, and the echo command. Let's get started. PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. It is a programming language that was designed for creating dynamic websites. It slots into your web server and processes instructions contained in a web page before that page is sent through to your web browser. This allows certain page elements to be generated on the fly. For example, you could use PHP to show the current date and time at the top of each page on your site. Also, it can easily process data submitted in HTML forms and talk to various database systems, allowing the generation of a web page based on SQL query. You've seen this type of application on virtually all online stores and search engines. It's extremely flexible and fairly forgiving, therefore making it easy to learn, even if you have not done any programming in the past. Think of PHP as a cross between C. Perl and Java. Where does PHP fit into the grand scheme of things in a web environment? Once answered, then you'll know what capabilities PHP has. Let's examine. PHP modules attach to your web server, telling it that files with a certain extension should be checked for PHP code. Any PHP codes found in the page are executed. Then the codes are replaced by the output they produce before the web page is sent to the browser. Sometimes the PHP interpreter is called upon after the web page is loaded. This occurs when a link is clicked, form submitted, or URL typed in. Once the web page is fully downloaded, PHP plays no further part until another web page is requested by the browser. One thing PHP is not capable of doing is client-side validation. Client-side validation checks that the value entered in one field meets certain criteria before moving to the next field. Client-side validation is achieved when PHP works with JavaScript. The beauty of PHP is that it doesn't rely on the web browser at all. Your script will run the same way no matter what browser you use. There's no need to worry about enabling JavaScript or making sure it is compatible with older browsers. This tag is from a PHP-driven web page that displays the current date. This tag tells PHP that everything that follows is program code rather than HTML until the closing tag. In this example, the echo command tells PHP to display the next item to screen. The date command produces a formatted version of the current date containing the day, month, and year. In this tutorial, PHP code appears inside tags that look like this. Other tag styles can be used, so you may come across other PHP codes beginning with tags that look like these. The full PHP tags used in this tutorial are the only ones that are always available. Other versions must be turned on or off by using PHP configuration settings. To keep things simple, we'll stick with the full tags. Just remember that anything that is not enclosed in PHP tags will be passed straight through to the browser exactly as it appears in the script. So, in the example we just used, the text "Today is" will appear before the generated date when the page is displayed. In order to create and run your own PHP scripts, you have to install PHP. If you do not have PHP installed, click this link for instructions. Once installed, a new file should be created called time.php. Time.php should include the code in listing 1.1 in a location that can be accessed by a PHP-enabled web server. When the URL is entered in your web browser. You will see the current date and time according to the system clock on your server. Obviously, this could be formatted a little better. As you can see, there is no space between the time and the word "and." 
That's because any line in a script that only contains code inside PHP tags will not take up a line of output in the generated HTML. If you insert a space character, that line will then contain non-PHP elements and the output will be spaced correctly. While it is great to use PHP for embedding small dynamic elements, it is also possible that a whole page could consist of a set of PHP instructions if the whole script was enclosed in PHP tags. This is where the echo command comes into play. The echo command is used to send output to the browser. Listing 1.2 is used to display the result of the date command by returning a string that contained a formatted version of the current date. This does the exact same thing, but instead uses a series of echo commands in a single block of PHP code to display the date and time. This works simply by putting any non-dynamic text elements in either double or single quotation marks to enclose text strings. Check out how the space characters are used inside the quotation marks to make sure that the output from date is spaced away from the surrounding text. The output from listing 1.2 is slightly different than listing 1.1, but you will need to use view source to actually see the difference. The raw output of listing 1.2 looks like this. There are no line breaks this time, but in the web browser, the output looks the same as it does in listing 1.1, because in HTML, all white space, including carriage returns and multiple space or tab characters, are displayed as a single space in a rendered web page. A new line character inside a PHP code block does not form part of the output. Line breaks can be used to format the code in a readable way, but several short commands could appear on the same line of code, or a long command could span several lines. That's why we have to use the semicolon to show where the command ends. This code is identical to listing 1.2, except the formatting used here is pretty much unreadable and is a good example of how not to format your script. A good way to make sure your scripts don't come out unreadable is to add comments to it. A comment is basically a piece of free text that can show up anywhere in a script and is completely ignored by PHP. Let's take a minute to look over a few of the different comment styles that are supported by PHP. First is the single line comment where everything to the end of the current line is ignored. There's also the single or multiple line comment which means that everything shown between these symbols will be ignored. Our next listing shows the same formatting as the other three listings but has lots of comments added to it. They're all ignored by PHP so the output here will only show the date and time. All right, lesson one is complete, and you've learned how PHP works in a web environment and what a simple PHP script looks like. You can now test your knowledge by linking to our quiz area or access the scripts we learned in the lab. You can also go through the lesson again. The choice is yours. Thank you for choosing Sam's Teach Yourself.